here's an example of something you, you might find in the pile. This was a chandelier that was likely hanging from the ceiling. But now it's areas like this massive field behind me that looks more like a man-made lake right now than it does farmland. Just a few hundred yards from where emergency crews dumped sand last night, you can see the effects of the flooding and the fields right nearby. The water is moving swift and steady down this ravine. It could sweep you away if you're not careful. Taylor, you can just see the oil still dripping here down the side of this plane. Emergency crews put these mats underneath the plane earlier today to catch any of that residue. These tabulators are what are counting the votes. This one here is just four votes away from 600. It's staged over here, there will be four metal detectors that they will be funneling about 4,500 people through. And in today's age of social media, nothing you say or do online is private, which is exactly how this story went viral. Now, when that ice melts, it will cause a rush of water that will be more than the tunnel can handle. Taylor, this big guy here, his name is Zorro. He's 10 pounds. He's a purebred silver fox rabbit, and he's just one of the animals being judged at this weekend's competition. You can even submit your absentee ballot after hours in the drop box at the fairgrounds. In just the last few hours that I've been out here, I've heard several people honk their horns. I even witnessed two cars slam on their brakes and nearly collapse. Our Montana McLaughlin's been following the story since it began and tailed deputies during the chase. A family from Lake Stevens, Washington, caught in the crossfire of armed robbery, carjacking, and a hostage situation. There's a husband and wife. At least one child and a mother in law. It all started when two suspects held Dino's casino employees at gunpoint. Workers say they took money from the safe, then sped off in one stolen car, ditched it, and found another car with a family inside. Moments later, gunshots. Law enforcement tailed the car until speeds got too high and dangerous. I barely had a second to catch this video. Tell them to stop the car and let everybody else out. It's only willing to let one kid out right now. That's the hijacked vehicle driving away after dropping off the first hostage. A 12-year-old boy, a 15-year-old girl and her grandmother were released a few blocks away. But the armed men held on to the parents. It was rough on them to uh, let their children out and their children give them kisses goodbye, not know if they were going to see them again. After a nearly hour long chase, they got away. Then the abandoned vehicle was later spotted near Evero Hill. And it was uh, around 520 this morning that the parents were reportedly uh, on Highway 93 North. The parents were safe, but there was no sign of the suspects. We believe were ultimately picked up at some point by an accomplice. Deputies warned residents to stay inside and brought in special reinforcement. And canines searched the area. It all led back to the main road. We're very sure that they were making arrangements to have that done while traveling up to that area. Now, authorities aren't sure where they could be headed. An ominous fog lingers over the Bitterroot Valley. Well, it just kind of all busted loose. It's crazy, man. <laughs> the rains let up for now, but that didn't stop assembly lines of people from stocking up on sandbags to protect their home. I'm experiencing wet feet. <laughs> Unfortunately, you never prepared for all this. Greg Davis works for the Corvallis School District. He stopped by the fire department to grab extra sandbags. Several floods on several uh, on the campuses that we have to keep pumping water out. To. Emergency crews say they dumped six tons of this sand here last night, and they expect the whole pile to be gone by this evening. Crews dumped additional sand at fire departments in Victor, Stevensville, Florence, and Three Mile. The warnings have not changed. We've, we've seen considerable amounts of water on a lot of the county roads. It's just a bunch of ice and logs and just some branches, just a bunch of junk. Jim Andruski helped divert traffic down Dutch Hill Road, where residents say kids got on the school bus just minutes before all water broke loose. All of a sudden, it just came up within five minutes. Literally, it was like five minutes, and it was what you see now. Back on the east side of Highway 93, we checked in with neighbors at Willow Creek Drainage. They say the water got all the way past these sandbags Thursday night. That's why county commissioners passed an emergency proclamation Friday morning to free up county resources to help respond, like allowing overtime hours and access to the county's emergency management fund. And those are tax monies that are specifically allocated to pay for extraordinary expenses that might result from a declared emergency or disaster. As residents pick up the damage, local authorities warn there could be more to come.
Now, the sheriff's department does not expect to have to evacuate anyone this time around, which is the good news in all of this. They do ask anyone, though, who starts to see any rising waters like what you see behind me to call 911 immediately. Reporting live in Corvallis, Montana McLaughlin, NBC Montana. And residents who lost their homes in the fire are still not allowed to go back and assess the damage. Our Montana McLaughlin spoke to one Hamilton woman whose home was reduced to ashes. Good afternoon, Ravalli County Museum. Thelma speaking. Greeting customers at the Ravalli County Museum is the only thing Selma Durbin can do to numb the pain. This is probably one of the hardest things I've ever went through in my life. The Roaring Lion Fire destroyed her home of 26 years. I, I can never go in that home again because it just isn't there. I feel a very, very deep loss, and I know that loss isn't going to be replaced because it's gone. Selma had just returned from volunteering Sunday afternoon when a deputy knocked on her door. He said, get out of here right now and don't loiter. With barely 15 minutes to get out, this pair of shoes, her phone and a few photographs was all she could take. All the things that I had from my children, my mother and father, they're no, they're no longer there. It's like a death. It's, it's gone. And it's not coming back. Friends came by the museum to check in all day. Her Facebook page is flooded with comments. Through the trauma, Selma's overwhelming selflessness is what pushes her through. If my home had to burn, so be it. If the other homes were saved because mine burned, I'm glad. Because they're not going through what I'm going through. For now, she just hopes to find peace of mind. And I think one of the things that hits me is I can't drive back up that road and go into my house. It's, it's just not there. Selma is now torn between moving to Arizona to be closer to family or staying in a place she loves but is now deeply scarred. I love the quiet. I could sit out on the deck and listen to the breeze going through the pines. In Hamilton, Montana McLaughlin, NBC Montana. While we wait out the judge's decision, you might have noticed construction work happening on that building right now. We sent Montana McLaughlin to find out why workers are there when no demolition decisions have been made. Montana. Uh, Steve Laurel, I've made close to 50 phone calls and sent 50 emails the last two days just to track all of this information down. A worker on site told us all he knows is that his company, Environmental Contractors, was hired to remove sheetrock and asbestos from the building. Now, asbestos is a toxic material that, if inhaled, is proven to cause lung and respiratory disease, even cancer. But if the fate of the mark is still up in the air, we wanted to know who's paying for all of this work and why. If you've walked by, you've seen it. Workers in white suits, bobcats in action. But if the fate of the Missoula Mercantile is still undecided, what's going on? We went to find out. A worker told us they've been removing asbestos from the Merck ceiling and windows since November. Asbestos, that developer home base Montana told us, was never fully cleaned up when the building was a Macy's department store six years ago. That's because renovation plans fell flat. And now, with the weather, the asbestos removal is causing problems. Crews told me that the process to remove asbestos has put some holes and cracks in the roof of the mercantile, causing snow and ice to leak inside of it this winter. So who's paying for it? Development services manager Don Veru told us the city gave Missoula Mercantile LLC a permit to clean it out in October. We found out that company, Missoula Mercantile LLC, is the development partner of Homebase Montana. Homebase plans to partially demolish the building, and they told us they're also paying for the cleanup. But here's the catch. Property records show Homebase doesn't even own the building. We found out cleaning up a building like that isn't cheap and certainly isn't easy. We went online and found sometimes asbestos cleanup can cost more than demolition itself. And new cleanup asbestos methods even cut out entire sections of a building. Homebase didn't get back to us on which method they're using, but the city says no matter who owns it, the asbestos has to go. We dug even further and found the building's current owners, Octagon Partners, has over $20,000 of unpaid property taxes. We reached out to them and their manager, J.P. Williamson, told us they've always paid and will pay everything owed in the next 48 hours. But he also told us he's frustrated about this whole lawsuit. We are we're paying taxes on a property that we have been unable to sell due to the actions of a preservation group 
um, that opposes the demolition of the building and has filed an appeal to the city's decision. We anticipate a ruling on that process shortly. So the bottom line for all of this for the Missoula Mercantile is that it's still a waiting game, but it sounds like the end could be coming soon. Reporting live in Missoula, Montana McLaughlin, NBC Montana.